Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about putting Donald's head on a statue and then making Donald's head match the colour of the statue by using the match colour command. Not many people use it. I'm on a background layer, I need to duplicate it, command and control J. I'm going to call it Don, D-O-N, command zero to fit back on screen or control zero. Make the background layer not visible. Now I'm going to bring in the statue, because you need the statue underneath Donald when we come to select and mask out his head. It's really important that, so you can see it in context. File, place embedded, find the image, place, command or control minus if you can't see the bounding box, shift key kept pressed to constrain it to its current proportions so you won't affect the aspect ratio and the alt and option key kept pressed as well so on coming out from the center from the reference point there so that'll do tick symbol put it below don it's a smart object the only way i can do a pixel edit is by double clicking here it creates a temporary document there come and make the edits Command and Control W would save them, then you'll go back to the image. But with a smart object you cannot paint on it, I might have to rasterize this layer later. Let's mask out Donald. W for the quick selection tool, so it, it must look like that. Select subject, does a reasonable job. Make sure you're on the minus brush and it's large enough. Right hand square bracket key going to make it larger. Just go around like that to make sure we're not bringing the shirt or the badge in, his tie or anything, a bit down there as well, and a bit on his shoulder I can see down there, and a bit on that shoulder there as well. I think that's okay. Select a mask. Command zero to fit on screen, or control zero. Now the edge in this context here with edge detection means a border around the edge. So if I went to the refine edge brush tool and click show edge, it'll go dark because there is no edge around the edge. That doesn't make sense, but when I put the radius on, it will. So edge in this context is about a border saying to Photoshop, will you re-evaluate these areas? Because I don't think you've picked up all of the hair. Now a smart radius will do this, where there's a definite demarcation between the two areas, you know, two different changes of color or luminosity, it doesn't need to be so wide, so Smart Radius will make those areas narrower, but where the hair is, try and keep them wide. Now, if I take the show edge off, you'll see what I've done with Radius. I've brought a lot of stuff in I don't want, red color, etc., etc. I could bring the radius down to something smaller, even like three pixels or something, which I might do, by the way. I'm not going to bother using the Refine Edge Brush tool, which does exactly the same thing, except you're controlling it with the diameter of the brush. But I don't think I need it. I could quickly go around here and just do a little bit and see if it does it any better, but I don't think it will. Basically, I'm going to use the Brush tool on Minus to take out these problem areas because I don't need them. And yeah, I don't need them at all. So I know this is not the right way of doing things in some ways, but people always pick very easy images to do masking on, and I don't. I pick what I like, and I think, well, I have to go along. I don't want that dark bit there, because I know that might cause me a problem, and that dark bit there as well, so I'll take off some of the hair there. Alter options should swap between the two brushes, but it doesn't seem to be working at the moment, so I need to bring that out a little bit more around there probably. Uh, and then minus again on that few bits there. Uh, control Z was a bit too much. B for brush. Make the brush a bit smaller. Well, this should have been on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking reasonably good. I might even take that area out there because it's no good. i um, definitely take that area out there. I know this is, you know, not going to be perfect because I need to get on. This is about the match color command, so I'll get rid of that black bit there as well. Uh, have I got anything going on down there? Z or Z, zoom in. I think I might have a few problems there. B for brush, let's just have a look. I'm going to shift the edge in by about 20%. I'm going to feather it by about, mm, feather it by about three and a bit, 3.8 pixels. I'm going to go with that. Output to a selection, okay. Command zero to, or control zero to fit on screen. Command or control J to duplicate and that will put that head on its own layer. Alt or Option key kept pressed to isolate just that layer. Yeah, 
it's done its job. I don't like that neck area. E for the erase tool on brush, 100% and 50% flow. That would probably do it quite well. So two bits around there will get rid of that bit there. And that'll do. Not being too fussy. Got a bit around the ear as well. I forgot to pick up a little bit earlier on. So, yeah, that's not bad. I might take a little bit more of that neck out. And a bit there as well. Nick it in to make it look a bit better. I'm not going to resize it. I'm not going to use free transform. The reason for that is free transform is destructive because I'm going to make it smaller. And when I come to make it smaller, I'll point out a few things to you with interpolation as well. All I care about now is this statue layer. So alter option key kept press, click on the statue layer. I need to get rid of the gray background because the match color command will use every color in the image unless you isolate it with a selection or, or whatever. But I'm basically going to have to select subject. So I went to the quick selection tool, select subject. This is not going to be a fussy mask. Where I've got a few problems, I'll make the brush a little bit smaller with the left hand square bracket key. And I'm on minus. I'm just going to add these few bits in like that. Uh, maybe ultra option key should bring me to plus, which it doesn't seem to be doing at the moment. So back to the plus one. So I'll get that bit of torso back in. Not important, but I'm just looking at it again. It's a few areas there. Minus uh, there. That'll do because all I care about is the overall color. So there's no gray in it. So command and control J. Call that color because I'm using that to color Donald. So that's that. I'll get rid of that for the time being. Put it on that layer there. Make sure Donald is visible and selected. Go to Image, Adjustments, Match Color. Under Source, choose the document, you can even pick another document other than this document, but make sure you choose the current one. Layer should be color because this is the source. You can see what's happened. With a, a statue like this, this is virtually one color. This is really difficult. So what I'm going to do is fade it a little bit. Take the color intensity down and bring the luminosity up a little bit. And I think that's all I'm really going to do with this. Um, Load statistics and save statistics. Uh, it's pretty obvious you can save them here or load them in. You can work with selections as well and all these things, but basically we're just going to stay with what we've got. So I've just faded it, brought down the color intensity, brought up the luminance, might bring up a little bit more as well. Okay, that will do. I could use an adjustment layer. I might do that when I finish resizing it, but I think actually I'm going to do the adjustment layers now. In fact, I will move it without resizing it so I can see the head a bit better. Back up to the head layer here. I should have named that up, head. Come to the half moon symbol here and choose, I think, hue saturation will be best. Make sure it's clipped to the layer below by clicking on this so we're only working on the head layer. Take the saturation down a bit, bring the lightness up. And do you know something? It's not looking that bad. Bring the bit too much with the saturation. I think that's not looking too bad. I do need to resize it now. F7, back to the head layer. I could have done the hue saturation adjustment layer after I resized it if I wanted to, but I just happened to do it now. So command and control T and make sure the shift key is pressed and the alter option key so we work from the reference point inwards, which happens to be at the center. Now you might not see your reference point. I've turned it on in preferences. I think the reference point is off in preferences by default now. Command zero or control zero to fit on screen. Bring it up into the roughly into the area. Shift and alter an option. Press together at the same time. And do that to go in. Now notice the interpolation. I've picked by cubic smoother. If you're on by cubic automatic, which most of you will be on, it will pick when you go down sample by cubic sharper. I prefer by cubic smoother. That's my choice. Right, so let's bring it up a little bit more and say, does that look about right? Slightly smaller. I can use these measurements up here, but shift, alter option, just a slight bit smaller. That, that'll do. Move it across. Move it up. I'm using the arrow keys now. Shift and right. One, two, three, four, five. I think that looks okay. I'm going to bring it down because there's a very dark edge on the statue there. Just bring it up a bit more there. And that will help me when I come to match the color up. Let's turn that color layer off. Let's go back to the statue layer. I'm going to rasterize it. Let's get rid of that color layer, as a matter of fact. Right click, rasterize, so I can do pixel edits on it. 
clone stamp tool, S on your keyboard, there it is. Normal, opacity 100, flow 100, current layout, very important. Alt or Option key kept pressed, click down to sample and just go around and check. I could zoom in, I know that. Alt or Option key kept pressed here and go around and check. You haven't got any of that statues still showing. Okay, I'm going to play around with the hue saturation a little bit more, take the saturation down a bit and bring the lightness up. Quite a bit. Yeah, I might use curves a little bit. So F7, another adjustment layer. I'm going to use curves. And automatically, it's not clipped to the bottom layer. So Z or Z, I'm going to zoom in. Pick the hand there and just drag up in this area here. I'm just going to make that a little bit brighter there. You need to keep the current luminosity of, of Donald or else you'll make him look too blown out. So I'm looking at that thinking it's not bad. Whilst I'm here, F7, move tool, I'm going to move him down a bit because I can see I'm not on the head though, as I am on the head. Shift and down, maybe up a little bit more because there's a very dark line there. Command zero to fit back on screen. Um, Might bring a bit more saturation back in. I'm not sure how I'm going to proceed, actually. I might lessen the edge and how I can do that. Now, this is a pixel layer with a lot of transparency on it. So what I could do is use the erase tool to make it a bit more transparent on that edge. This is my idea, you know. I'm just thinking real world now how I can make that less obvious. So E for the eraser tool. Brush, 100% opacity, which I'm probably going to lower to about... 60, so I'll press 6 on my keyboard. For the flow, I'm going to go for 20, which is Shift 2 to put it on 20. And I'm going to make a smaller brush and take this risk in one fail swoop around here. No, don't like it. Maybe opacity of 30, just to make it just a bit less obvious. I'm only going around once as well, like so. Also, I've got a bit of matting there, and I'm going to get rid of that now by going to Layer, Matting, Defringe. I'm going to pick about six pixels and see if it gets rid of it. It does. I'm going to dodge and burn destructively now. Oh, on your keyboard. I'm on the burn tool. It's mid-tone to 20%. That sounds about right for me. I might darken off this left-hand side a bit round by his hair as well, so I'm just going to be working around here a little bit. That's probably a bit too dark. Command and Control Z a couple of times. Mid-tones, one for 10%, just to make it a bit darker on this side because the light really is coming in from the other side. But Donald's head was done, obviously, it has a different light pattern uh, falling on it. So I'm just making that a bit darker around there as well. Yes, I could press the Alter Option key to go over to the Dodge tool, but I'm going to go over to it myself. 20%, that looks quite good. And just drag down there once. Just get rid of that area there. Still a bit too dark. I might come to the statue layer here, be careful not to touch the grey, and just make that a bit darker in itself. So back to the burn tool. As I said, I can use the alter option key to switch between them. But I'm just going to go around here a little bit, darken it off a little bit. I don't want to introduce a colour cast. I'm on mid-tones at 10%. Let's try 3 for 30 and see if I can darken it down a bit around there as well. Now, on Donald, back to the head, I'm going to make it a bit lighter there. I'm on the burn tool. I need to be on the dodge tool. So I can press the alter option key, as I keep saying, but I'm going to pick the dodge tool. It's on 20% exposure. So I'm just going to quickly lighten it up a little bit around there, just a little bit, and maybe darken it. I'm going to use the alter option key this time around there as well, like so. The hair doesn't look, it's blown out, it doesn't look very good. So I'm going to use the clone stamp tool on Donald's head, S for the clone stamp tool. So alter option key to sample down over there. I'm just going to paint around there and put a bit of, get rid of some of that glare. And same for around here as well, just to get rid of it because I'm picking that bit of hair up there as well. Does it look fantastic? Well, no. And I think it needs to be lightened a lot on the head layer. So O for the... Dodge tool, I'm going to put it up to 30% three on my keyboard and just, I'm taking a big risk here. I'm just going to lighten it up quite a lot around there. You know, it looks too obvious. Now I could use the erase tool as well. E on my keyboard, I'm taking the risk. 20% flow, 0.5 quickly, 
the five percent opacity and just go around there a little bit more and just take that off a little bit bring the passy up to about 20 percent and the flow down to shift zero five which is five percent and take a risk around here of making it a bit more transparent on that edge Command one, which is fit on screen, spacebar, it doesn't look that bad. It's okay. Now, if I did it with human skin, well, it would probably be a lot better. This was a big ask with a one-coloured statue and, you know, trying to match up the luminosity and stuff like that. It's, it's a big ask. But it's okay. I still think that edge is too strong there. I would like to take that down. I could look on the curves tool one more time, actually, Z or Z to zoom in, and give it a go on the curves tool of making it a bit brighter there in that region, just there, like so. Because I've already done it, I'm causing a bit of a curve there. I think it looks okay. Uh, command one, if it's on the screen, space bar to bring it up. So you're seeing a 100% view. It's okay. I think I've done a reasonable job. As I said, with proper human skin, I would have probably got it better. Big ask, real world, it doesn't look that bad. Thank you very much.